So in this video, I'm going to tackle a question that has literally been around for millennia. Cold or hot water, which freezes faster? Believe it or not, this has actually been a controversy for quite a while, so I thought I'd come in and solve it once and for all. So I took two containers, added 228 grams of boiling water to one, and the same amount of room temperature water to the other. I put them in the freezer for about two and a half hours and then took them out. Cutting a hole into the center of each ice block and extracting all the unfrozen water allowed for a comparison of exactly how much water was left unfrozen in each. And what do you know? There's clearly more water in the container that held the room temperature water. In fact, there was 153 grams of water in, left in the cold container and 147 grams in the hot water container which must mean that the hot water throws six grams extra of water into ice, right? This has been referred to as the Mpemba effect, named after the Tanzanian student who described it while looking at freezing ice cream. And believe it or not, many scientific papers have been written about it, describing the causes of it, uh, including changes to the hydrogen bonds within warm water, convection currents, supercooling, gas volatilization, and the list goes on. With each new paper published on the topic, we see the exact same headline. But before trying to explain a phenomenon, maybe you should try to determine whether or not that phenomenon exists. So does hot water freeze faster than cold? Well, let's look at the experiment in a little bit more detail and add some more controls. So there was 228 grams of water in each container. 147 was left in the hot and 153 was left in the cold. So you would expect that 81 grams of ice formed in the hot container and 75 grams in the cold, right? But let's add the water back and measure the total. Taking away the weight of the containers, we see now that the total amount of the contents is 214 grams in the hot and 225 in the cold. So over the course of the freezing, the cold container lost three grams but the hot container lost 14. So the amount of ice that was actually formed was 67 grams in the hot container and 72 grams in the cold. But how on earth did that happen? So the key here is evaporation. Whenever you make yourself a, a hot drink like a tea or a coffee, you'll notice that hot water has steam rising out of it, but cold water doesn't. This is because there's more energy contained within the hot water and allows some of the particles on the surface to break free in a process we call evaporation. Now, as more water evaporates, less water is available to form ice. With less water left in the hot water container, the same amount of energy removed from each will have a bigger impact. It's the same reason why you get smaller ice cubes forming faster than larger ones. But there's no free lunch here. The evaporation more than compensates, so you'll never get more ice from hot water than cold water. Now, if this hypothesis is correct, then we should expect that if we eliminate evaporation, then the effect would go away. To do this, all you need to do is add a lid to the container. And now we see the hot water container has significantly more unfrozen content than the cold. So 202 grams compared to 192. The cold water container froze 61 grams of its water as opposed to 51 grams for the hot water. If the evaporation explanation is correct, we would also expect a few other things to happen. Containers with less surface area to volume would evaporate less water, causing hot and cold water to freeze more similarly. Also, if the temperature was reduced from boiling to around 80 degrees, then we would have less energy in the system to evaporate water, and the result should minimize the effect as well. Running the experiment a few more times with different setups, we see exactly that. The more you restrict evaporation, the more water that's left over in the hot container, and the more similar it is to the cold water. So in this experiment, it seems that as expected, hot water does take long to freeze in cold water. So why all the controversy? Why so many scientific papers on the subject that is so easily testable? Well, because there are many factors that influences not only how fast water cools, but at what temperature it freezes. Subtle changes to the minerality, convection currents, and other factors can be measured to have an effect in well-controlled environments. But as far as your freezer goes, 
it's all down to evaporation. So the next time you have an ice cube emergency and you just need to freeze water quicker, rather than using boiled water, try putting in a little less water in the tray instead. It will freeze quicker.